Super Bowl champions, Eagles fans everywhere, this is for you. Let the celebration begin. There's just really no way to sugarcoat this. It's a it, it's a, a tough loss for the Eagles. Three months before the season is supposed to start, we find out on Monday, Pro Bowl right guard Brandon Brooks is out for the season. Yeah, not just Pro Bowl right guard. You know, maybe the best guard in, in Eagles history, and a guy that's had, you know, injuries the last couple of years, the other Achilles, uh, shoulder. Um, he's been through a lot and, uh, it's, it's a huge loss and, and, um, you know, new medical staff and, and new trainers and new doctors and everything. And it's, you know, certainly not blaming anybody cause you know, they haven't even probably met Brandon yet. I guess they have cause he's rehabbing, but yeah, it's just a, uh, it's, it's like, here we go again. Uh, what could make this year worse? And, and then it happens. And, uh, you know, we're sitting here in, in June and the Eagles won't have their pro bowl guard if for whatever part of the season ends up being played whether it's some or all um once again brandon brooks is hurt it's brutal i should mention this is eagle eye and uh we're doing an emergency podcast because this news is so big i mean it is it really is a devastating loss i think back to um the 2018 season when they lose that game to the divisional round game against the saints a few months later, Jason Kelsey says, "Yeah, we were right guard away from winning that game." I mean, there That's aren't the a first lot of, thing I thought of. Yeah, I mean, there aren't a lot of guards in the league that really affect their team this much. Um, but he's a special player. I mean, he was he was probably the best guard in football last year. I mean, that's how good this guy is. He got snubbed by the All Pro team, um, but you know that's how good he is. Uh, so the injury happened, like you said, he, he's been rehabbing from that shoulder. So he's one of the few players who has been allowed to work out at the Novacare complex over the last few months. So he was actually working out there this morning. He was running on a practice field, um, felt it pop. It's the other Achilles. He tore his right Achilles in, in the end of the 2018 season. This is his left. And he knew right away. I mean, once you go through that, apparently it's Hopefully I never have to experience it, but apparently you, you kind of know what, what that feeling is and he knew right away. Um, it, it sucks. I mean, there's not really a way around that. Um, I had a chance to text with Brandon really briefly uh, tonight and typical Brandon fashion, you know, no worries. You know, it's the left one this time, but uh, it, you kind of think back to the last time he tore it, he was back in eight months. And I, I think so much of that was, positive thinking. Now, I don't know how, what happens to your mindset when you have to go through this again. Uh, but the last time he did, I, I honestly, I took a life lesson from that to, to kind of see uh, how powerful positivity can be. Yeah. I remember we wrote that story because that was, you know, that was a year the Eagles had a bunch of injuries. It was one of the years they had a bunch of injuries. And, you know, a lot of his teammates talked about, you know, how, how, how inspirational he was. I remember talking to Joe Osman when he got hurt, he said the first guy that, that, uh, that talked to him was Brandon Brooks and said, you know, just stay positive, you know, don't feel sorry for yourself. And he said, it really, it really meant a lot to him. And it really, he really took it to heart. Um, you know, and that's one of the things that makes this so hard. I mean, you're, you're really close to Brandon. Uh, I'm not as close as you are, but I really, I've always liked him. He's such a, a positive guy. Um, you know, and you just feel so bad for him. I mean, you feel bad on the one hand for the team and what a loss it is on the O-line. Uh, but just for him personally, he's been through so much. You know, he overcame the anxiety um, that, you know, that kept him out of uh, a few games uh, two different times. And, um, you know, he's doing great with that. has been very open and very positive about, you know, how he got help that he needed. And, um, you know, he's he's been... Yeah, I'm sure he's helped a lot of people out, out there, um, you know, who might've been reluctant to get help that they needed in terms of therapy or medication or whatever it is. I, I just can't, you know, I mean, the team thing is one thing, but just, he, I just feel so bad for him. He's such a good guy, such a good dude. And he's at an age, I don't know. We went through this with JP who had two of them, you know, the same Achilles, really the same injury twice. Um, you know, Brandon, I think will be 31 this summer and, you know, he's, he's a freak of nature like JP, but, um, 
JP came back as good as ever, which was incredible, but we don't know. We, we don't know if, you know, if that Brandon Brooks will come back at that level, um, knowing him, he'll do everything humanly possible to make sure it happens. And I certainly wouldn't bet against him, but it's, uh, you know, you just, you just feel so bad for the, for the guy. Um, he's been through yeah, so I mean, much already. And you look the last time he went through it. The amazing part was not just that he came through it in eight months, but he was better last year than he had ever played. So, I mean, that gives you a little bit of hope, but you're right. I mean, when you're 31 years old, it's a, it's a valid fear to wonder how the body is going to react to this. And if you're ever going to get back to that level and, and you know, the, the good thing is we're sitting here thinking about this. I guarantee you he isn't. Um, I, I think we're probably feeling more sorry for him than he is for himself, which is a good thing. Um, Cause I know I couldn't get through an injury like that and he's going to do it twice. Um, but you, you do start to wonder about long term. He's 31 years old. He, he's coming back from this injury now. He'll be 32 by the start of the 2021 season. He's under contract through 24, I believe. They gave him that extension, um, the highest paid guard in the league. I think he still is. He was when he signed it. Um, you hope that he, he comes back as good as ever. You don't know. Uh, that's the long term, though. In the short term, right now the Eagles are without their right guard, one of their most important pieces of their team. Where do they go from here? Well, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of different ways you can look at this. Um, Jason Peters has been a tackle his whole life. You know, I, there's no doubt. I don't think any of us question whether he could come in and play um, play right guard for you. I think he'd probably be a pretty good right guard. You know, Matt Pryor played well, um, you know, after Brandon got hurt last year. He, he's he's a solid guy. Um, they like him. Uh, Jack Driscoll is, you know, a guy who can, can play right guard, but he's a rookie. He's a fourth-round pick. And, you know, who knows? They You know, the coaches haven't even worked with him. You know, they haven't even met the guy. Um, you know, my guess is – and you know, and then there's uh, there's there's other things you can do. Can Jordan Melata play some guard? I don't know, um, but uh, I would think Matt Pryor would, you know, be the first guy in there. Um, you know, short of bringing Jason Peters back as a guard, which I wouldn't rule out. I wouldn't uh, either. You know, the, and so that's kind of the way I view it right now. Like Matt Pryor is probably the odd. I mean, they they felt comfortable enough. Not that they had really much of an option last year, but he, he started in that playoff game. It was okay. It wasn't great. Um, well, the option was what we saw against Seattle the first time. So that wasn't really an option. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I think that you're right. He probably has the first crack at this, but I wouldn't rule out Jason Peters coming back and playing right guard, honestly. And, and that's a huge ask to, to say, Hey, I know you're a hall of fame left tackle. Um, we're going to have you switch positions and flip sides. But it, it might be their best option. And if anyone could figure out how to do it, it would probably be, probably be JP. You know, it, there was a moment in his career where we talked to him about guard and, you know, he seemed somewhat open to it. Uh, and now that this is a couple years later, so you'd imagine he'd be more open to it now. Last year when the Eagles were in a pinch, he volunteered to go over to the right side and play right tackle. Um, and here we are. It, it's the middle of June. He doesn't have a job. He wants to be back here. I think we're all under the understanding right now that it won't be to play left tackle. It seems like they're going to go with Andre Dillard. So, yeah, if he doesn't have a job to play left tackle, why I, – I'd gamble on Jason Peters playing right guard, wouldn't you? Yeah, no question about it. And he might be their best option, and they might be his best option. You know, it, I mean, free agency is – you know, months in our rear view mirror, the draft is, you know, I kind of thought after the draft, there'd be teams would be like, all right, we didn't get the tackle we wanted. Well, you know, we'll give JP a one-year deal. That didn't happen. Free agency didn't happen. We're sitting here in, in, uh, in the middle of June now, I think it's June 15th and he doesn't have a job and they don't have a right guard. I think it, I think it makes perfect sense. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind, Dave, that he can handle it. I mean, yeah, I, I think so. And, and, you know, sometimes we see that with older tackles anyway. They end up transitioning the guard. And, and even some tackles who can't play tackle, they go to guard and it kind of saves their career. 
Jermaine um, Mayberry got benched. I mean, sure. he was a bust as a as a tackle. He goes to guard and makes a Pro Bowl. Starts yeah. on a Super Bowl team. So, um, heck, our colleague Barrett Brooks was he he talks about it all the time. How much that transition to guard helped him. Um, I, I think there's something to it. There are some other options. I, I mentioned we mentioned Peters and Pryor. Um, Driscoll's an option. They kind of view Jack Driscoll as like another Vitae that they think he's a versatile depth piece. You know, it, it's tough for a rookie coming in right now that he hasn't been in the building. Um, and he played mostly right tackle. He played right tackle at Auburn, but he did play some guard um, back at UMass. So I guess he's an option. You had Nate Herbig, who was on the roster all of last season as an undrafted player. They have Sua Opeta. Um, your favorite guy. I knew I, you know, I, I, I knew that Sua was going to come up. Yeah. But I mean, he, they liked him enough last year to keep him around the practice squad. They promoted him when they almost lost him. So there are some options in house and, and there are still some, at least interesting names as free agents that are available. Larry Warford made the last three pro bowls as a, as a guard for the saints. Um, my understanding there is that there are some contract demands and his weight is a little bit of an issue. Uh, how about Kyle Long? Chris's little brother, um, kind of retired, kind of, <laughs> as he said on Twitter just today, got fired by the Bears. But y- you kind of know what you have if if you want to bring him in. I don't know how much he has left. He ended last season on IR, but that's worth a, a look. Maybe Mike Person um, has a, a history playing under Kyle Shanahan and also – Rich Scangarello by uh, by association and two stops in San Francisco and Atlanta. So I tried to find a little correlation there. Ron Leary, um, who started for the Broncos last year, where Scangarello was. Um, so some of these guys have zone blocking in their background, which would help. And then the last guy, as crazy as it sounds, um, Chance Warmack is with Seattle right now. Oh, my God. I thought you were going to say Sean Andrews. Um, then maybe I uh, might be better off with Sean, but, uh, chances uh, he's on the Seahawks roster right now. He might make that team, but if they're desperate, they can get chance Warmack back. We're going to trade for chance Warmack. Sure. <laughs> Conditional eighth round pick. That yeah. Exist. Well, this, why would the Seahawks give him up? Right. <laughs> for, I mean, they, they, you know, the Eagles don't have any leverage, so you're not going to give up anything for for Chance Warmack at this point. But how old is he now? Well, he's not that old, is he? No, he's only 28. That's crazy. He's 28. He was washed up five years ago. Yeah. Um, um, I don't know. Last but year, there, there are some options though. Yeah, well, I think Warford's a good option if he's if he's in shape uh, out, out of those guys. But you know, money could be an issue. They don't have a lot of money. Um, well, they have it. They don't want to spend it because they want to carry it over. But yeah, my, my view on that is if there was ever a position to make them veer from that path, it's a starting offensive lineman. You know, like if there's one reason they'd break away from carrying over that money, it'd be for this position. Yeah. I mean, this is a whole off season of – getting younger. And I wonder how much that'll play into, Hey, let's just go with Matt Pryor. Um, Fair. Um, But I I just, you don't know what you have. And I guess you wouldn't know what you have with Jason Peters, but I I have confidence that he'd be able to figure it out. And even, you know, from an overall depth standpoint now, let's say Matt Pryor is your starting right guard. What if him or Sam Alu get hurt? Then what do you do? Yeah. No, you're right. I mean, at that point, they don't have any depth. Like, and as much as Big V wasn't a great player, he, he was a good depth piece to have. And, and if they still had him, he'd be the starting right guard right now. Yeah. Yeah, they should have matched that offer, right? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Yeah. Uh, no, these are all fair points. And, um, you know, for a guy like Driscoll in a normal year, by now you'd know what you have. You'd have mm-hmm. a good idea what you have in, in, you know, they wouldn't have, uh, they wouldn't have had any pads on, they wouldn't have hit, but you know, you'd have a pretty good idea. Um, you know what you have in him, um, you know, as, as well as, uh, 
you know, some of the other younger guys, you'd have certainly more on, on Sue Opita, a guy like that, or, or Herbig as a guard. You know, they just don't know about these young guys. Um, I think the good thing is they have Stoutland on their side. And this is a guy who – it's interesting. Interesting, you know, you look at uh, Brandon Brooks' career. I mean, this is a guy who, you know, we think of him as this perennial Pro Bowl guy. He never made a Pro Bowl before he came here. Yeah. You know, Brandon Brooks made his first Pro Bowl in 2017 – um, in his, gosh, his sixth NFL season, never mm-hmm. made a Pro Bowl in Houston. So I think Stoutland is as good as they come. And, you know, Eagles have been really lucky, you know, that they had Juan Castillo. They were lucky to have him as an offensive coach, at least. Um, you know, and and uh, and Stoutland, I, Juan and Jeff Stoutland, I think are two of the best uh, in the business. So, you know, you have that confidence level that whoever it is, he's going to get them coached up and get the most out of them that he can. But it's a, it's a tough situation, especially yeah. in this year with no OTAs and no mini camps. And, you know, unless you want to count the virtual ones, which I don't think really, you know, really count. So um, it'll, it'll be interesting. Maybe J- uh, Jason Peters price tag just went up a little bit, <laughs> <laughs> you know, as, He's like, well, now, now you need me. <laughs> no. Hey, it's not crazy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's funny with Brendan um, because when the Eagles got him in 2016, like he was – in Houston, he was talented. You know, he was a really – when I was down there with him, and he was a talented player. You could tell that he had all the skills to be a perennial Pro Bowl player. He just didn't put it together yet. And to me, that's what made um, the signing of him – I just did Howie Roseman's five best free agent signings ever. I had Brooks third. Um, the only ones ahead of it were Malcolm Jenkins and Nick Foles. Um, and those are two all timers. I Brooks is right there because they, they signed him for a pretty big deal. It was, it was a, I think it was a five year, $40 million contract. Right. That was a lot of money for him back then. Um, oh, it's not now, not now, but back then it was, you know, and, um, he was an okay player. He, he didn't even, you know, when he got in the league, uh, they drafted him in, in the third round and they drafted the Texans, Ben Jones, who's now the Titans center in the fourth round. And, um, it was Brandon Brooks was just so much more talented than Ben Jones. Like we all saw that he should be starting as a rookie, but Ben had like this, he, he's one of those like football savant type people. Like he has a, a photographic memory and he was just so, and he was a center background. So he just, he caught up in the playbook and he started more than, than Brandon that year. We're all going, what's going on here? And I remember um, John Benton, who was the, the Texans offensive line coach at the time, told me the other guy's going to catch up. Like, <laughs> don't worry, he's going to be there soon. Um, and eventually he did. And it was uh, one of my, my, I wrote about this when the Eagles signed Brandon was uh, during training camps back in Houston, J.J. Watt would wreck everyone except for Brandon Brooks. He was the only person quick enough and strong enough to face him. And that was kind of the first glimpse I got into this guy could be an all-pro player. Uh, and then you're right, he comes to Philly, and and Jeff Stoutland did a, a great job of pulling that out. And it's not just – him by himself it's that him and lane johnson form that right side of the offensive line the cohesion between those two you're not going to duplicate that and that's the big loss of this whole thing too you're not just losing one player you're losing um the effectiveness of your strongest side of the line yeah that's a great point and uh you know they're very close i mean they're they're you know they're best friends and um their lockers are next to each other. They're funny. They, you know, they're hilarious together. Um, you know, I, we, we talk about Carson Wentz, uh, you know, and, and his injuries and you look at Brandon now and his history and you, you gotta, you know, you just gotta, you know, I don't know if this is unfair, but, um, you know, this is, it's been a lot, it's been a lot for him and you just, I mean, just something as simple as just running on a grass field in June, um, that shouldn't happen, you know? I mean, yeah, you know, but th- what and my understanding of the Achilles is that when it's ready to go, it's going to go no matter what you're doing. You can be running on a field. You can be 
jumping. You can be walking upstairs. When you kill it, it's ready to go. It's kind of ready to go. Um, it, to me, they – and this is the same with Carson. They just feel like freak injuries. You know, um, th- to me, the injury-prone label applies to guys who have the Hammers. soft tissue. Yeah, the soft tissue stuff. The Rob um, Darby's. Yeah, Darby. You, know, you can even put Sydney in that with the the hand the soft tissue stuff. Um, yeah, guys like that who who had those little net like to me Carson and Brandon. These are just freaky fluke things, and it seems like a string of bad luck. Yeah, and, and maybe that's naive thinking. No, but I, yeah, I don't know. I, I I often think about Ryan Howard's Achilles uh, when he blew it out on the last pitch of the season. If you know he he blew it out running the running the ball out after he hit it, like what if he if he struck out, like does it never happen? Does it happen next time he comes up to bat? Like he if yeah. he, if, he, if he had an at bat where he didn't have to run it out where he didn't have to dig down at first. Uh, this that's a little off topic, but I've always wondered. I no, mean, well, yeah, I mean my understanding, like I like I said, and I, and we'd have to get a, someone who knows more than me, <laughs> but. Um, my understanding is like when the Achilles is going to go, it's going to go at a certain point. Now there are things that expedite that process, but um, I don't know if it's like altogether avoidable. Yeah. You know, and like, and you're talking about like Brandon Brooks running on a field, like jogging on a field, running on a field. I, he's going to have to run at some point, you know, it seems like unavoidable if it's going to happen like that, that it, it was going to happen. Yeah. No, you're probably right. Uh, I just feel so bad for the kid, and he's he's a class act. He's a great guy. It just, uh, it's well, like it's gutting to think about it for him. It really is. Yeah, the guy spent half of his Eagles career rehabbing. You, yeah, I mean, 2020 will be the third straight season where he won't be on the field for whatever the Eagles' last snap is. Right. That's tough. Especially yeah. when he's so important to this team. Yeah, you think about it. It'll it'll we'll go into twenty twenty one, and Carson and Brandon Brooks won't have finished the season together since sixteen. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Yeah, it's well, we wish we wish him the best. Yeah, knowing Brandon, he's going to sit there watching this podcast or listening to the podcast. I mean, come on, guys, <laughs> yeah. I'll be fine. Guys, <laughs> be like, guys, it's all right. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, we wish him the best. Um, it, so, Doug Peterson is scheduled to speak to reporters. We're recording this Monday night at around eight thirty. Um, so, you might not listen to it, this until after we talk to Doug Peterson. He's scheduled to speak to us at nine a.m. on Tuesday. So, um, we'll get some answers about what they're thinking in terms of replacing their starting right guard. That'll be interesting. And and all of a sudden there's a a pretty huge topic with three months left to go in in this off season. Yeah. And we will be doing our regularly scheduled Tuesday podcast. So we'll bring you all the latest and uh, uh, Barrett Brooks will be joining us um, and that'll be tomorrow. And we'll have, we'll do that after Doug talks. So we'll have everything, um, all the latest news, um, on a really, really disappointing story. Absolutely. I do feel obligated to tell everyone, if you like the podcast, do us a favor, rate and subscribe wherever you get podcasts. Uh, For Rube, I'm Dave. We will catch you guys soon. Thanks again.